It's our duty as a globe to ensure that children affected and infected by HIV AIDS are not neglected. And joining me in studio have Carly and Blossom from Yabonga. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Your centre works very closely with children, right? Yes. So what are the challenges that you found children in different communities to be going through? Uh, you know, they, they vary, but they, it's from child, uh, child abuse, you know, all kinds, of, all kinds of abuse. It's neglect. And especially those children that are orphaned, you know, through HIV, because they are being looked after by families and, and, and relatives, you know. And, you know, the people that are also receiving grants, they, it's business for them, for those children. They adopt them or foster, foster them, but to receive money for, their, or their, for themselves, not for the children. But the beauty of it is we're not working alone. We're working with the schools, we're working with the families. We're also working with other stakeholders like uh, TST, where we raise these issues. We report these kinds of abuse, you know, and we refer those children, you know, to other stakeholders, since we do have limited resources. And also, what are some of the children's programs that you have in place to ensure that children who are infected actually don't feel like they're not part of the bigger society? We have an after-school after school program which runs from Monday to Thursday, four times a week, and it's, it's a community base. We have community mothers who are from the community who open their homes for those children. They are, they are trained by Yabonga to do play therapy and also we have uh, child counselors who are also trained uh, by Yabonga. They are on contract and they are all HIV positive. So they know, you know, personally how it is to, to live with, the, with HIV. So we do a health education with these children. We do play therapy with them because we know children, they learn and heal through play. And also we have homework assistance. We also have a youth program where children who have done metric and haven't uh, done well, they, we have a gap year program for them where they go back to school to write for subjects that they didn't do well in, but to keep them in our program to support our children because they are fresh you know, from, from the school and our child counselors, they do not know about the current curriculum that is, is being used. So they, they offer this homework assistance to, to the children. And also we have uh, art, and, art and culture you know, where children play, dance, you know. So it, it is that harmonious environment and also uh, a, a space which is safe for them, which they can openly voice out what they are feeling and what they are uh, uh, going through in their own lives. And it's interesting that you bring the issue of education and curriculum into the picture. How is the organization ensuring that more schools are teaching, like educating, children or youth about HIV AIDS but not in the manner that it was done before because mm. sometimes you kind of feel like it's it's been done the same way over and over again so are there any new methods that uh, are being looked into? I think How we do it you know when, as, as I said earlier we're not working alone you know working with different stakeholders you know we uh, bring all the expertise to to teach these children about HIV. And you know, it's quite different with, with youth because they have their own minds, they want to do their own, their own things. And you know, the disadvantage, you know, with it that we recently find out is that, you know, they see us because I'm also HIV positive, I was a client at, at Yabonga. And now they see us, we've bounced back, I was very sick and we're from their own communities. And now I'm living, living healthy and I'm doing what things that I enjoy, you know, and I'm also studying, you know. So they think that if they are infected with HIV, they will also bounce back and it doesn't work uh, that way. So all of us, we come together to educate them, but it, it really doesn't guarantee if they won't be sexually active. But the best thing that we can do is to give them information, then they can decide what they want to do if they decide, you know. Um, I think also if I can just point out with in the way that we work with the schools what Blossom was saying in terms of how we're working with other stakeholders obviously um, there is general education around HIV like you were saying what they would what we've what's always been done in schools but what we found is that 
as much as a lot of our children and our youth have come from abused backgrounds, you know, every case is different depending on the personality of that child. It's the reason why we have like our play therapy and support groups and different types of assistant, assistance depending on the, on the sensitive cases. So when it comes to talking about HIV, I think in terms of what your bonga is doing to move that forward and, and from even looking at it how it's done in schools is to understand first of all that you know being HIV positive, HIV positive is not something to be ashamed about and that is still very much um, a taboo in, in the communities where we're working and um, children need to know from a young age that if they are HIV positive if they are not well if their parents have you know passed away and they're orphaned it's not something they need to be ashamed of and that's where we come in and provide support but we can't do that alone so and that's where we're working with our teachers to try and change that mindset so that even children who are in our program are not ostracized at school and uh, look it's a process um, you know that's why Blossom being at Yabunga as long as she has been and obviously um, being HIV positive herself is it's a it's a huge asset to the work that we do um, and just how we, we we bring that forward in, into schools and into the rest of um, the community yeah and, and to add on that, you know, we also are uh, uh, doing workshop or teaching them about sexuality mm -hmm. to, for them to know that, you know, it's not about sleeping with your, with your partner, but to hug, you know, to hold hands, mm -hmm. you know, to have that relationship where both partners can be, can respect, you know, can have that mutual respect, you know, because where I come from, if you have a boyfriend, it means we have to sleep together. There's that pressure. So we need to teach our children from the young age. That's what you do in our support groups. It's interesting about the fact that you spoke about uh, the sexual uh, interaction between young people because there's been a, there's still a great debate going on about condom distributions in school. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Okay, uh, personally, I, I would say, you know, for me, we must have condoms in schools, you know, because irrespective of what you do in terms of education, children will uh, ultimately decide if they want to be sexually active or to, to have sex. So for us to make sure that they do have condoms when they decide they have something, they do not have to walk far. Because now the challenge that we have, especially with the youth, they do not want to go to the clinics because of the stigma, because of how they are treated at the, at the, at the, at the clinics. So they, if we have the condoms at the school, it would be better because if they decide, then they would have uh, protected sex and it's easily accessible without them going to these facilities where they will be seen by family members, by the neighbors. Let's talk about the issue of ARVs. Do you also feel like there's still a stigma towards that? Are less young people or children on ARVs due to that stigma? Uh, I would say that it varies from an area to area, like um, Strand, like Gryfondain is still an issue, but when you go to Kailicha, it's, 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 diff it's, diff it's different, you know, when it comes to ARVs and, and, and children. And, you know, we educate them about HIV and also about a ARVs, and we, we're not administering the ARVs, but we're working closely with MSF who's doing that, with the clinics who are doing that. They are, and we're doing also adherence, you know, support groups. And they also conduct us when one of our children is, is, um, is not adhering to the treatment due to certain issues. And then we support that child on that and that family on that issue.